When 12-year-old Evan Valentine and his mother arrived at the Aldersbury Magic Academy, he was awed by its majestic Gothic-style buildings and aura of historical importance. Just passing through the tall, raw iron gates at the entrance of the school made the hair on his forearm stand on end. As they mounted the steps to the main hall, he rolled up his sleeve to show his goose flesh to his mother. Look, I'm not even cold, she nodded. It's the energy here that's giving you goosebumps. I'm not particularly magical and even I can feel it. As they moved down the marble-tiled hall towards the admissions office, he tried to ignore the titters and dismissive glances directed his way. The students wore uniforms, of course, but their attitude of arrogance and entitlement was intimidating. He tugged the two short cuffs of his freshly laundered shirt as far down on his wrists as possible, but his efforts to lengthen them were fruitless. Furthermore, nothing could conceal his worn boots, the darned knee of his corduroy pants, or the dreadful haircut his mother had given him in the bathroom at home. Mrs Valentine noticed him fidgeting with his clothes. Don't fret, lad. We may be poor, but our hearts are in the right place. Although her words were meant to be comforting, Irvin's heart sank even lower than before. If his mother had noticed he was the object of amusement, he must look worse than he thought. His confidence plummeted, and he began to regret coming with every fibre of his being. Just outside the frosted glass doors of the office, he grabbed his mother's sleeve. Maybe this isn't such a good idea. Why not? She regarded him with solemn blue eyes. We have an appointment. He leaned in to whisper. We can't pay the tuition, even if I'm offered a full scholarship. We can't even afford the uniforms. Uniforms can be purchased second hand. She patted his cheek and gave him an encouraging smile. First, we must prove you have the ability to study magic. Once they'd entered the office, his mother waved him towards a row of chairs. Have a seat until the examiner calls your name. He frowned. Where are you going? Not far. I'm just going to check in with the secretary, give her my financial aid form and meet with the admissions counsellor. Evan ambled towards an empty chair, sank into it and glanced around the room. Despite his embarrassment about his shabby appearance, he was excited to be at the school nevertheless. Could he impress the examiner enough to be offered a full scholarship? Never in his wildest dreams had he imagined pursuing a magical education, until his homeroom teacher, Mrs Halifax, witnessed him transform a pile of pencil shavings into a miniature tornado and sent it swirling into the school bully's lunch. Instead of writing him up for an infraction, she'd given Evan an application to the academy. What if he didn't have the right stuff to qualify? Or maybe the examiners were expecting him to have had a more formal education in the magical arts. Evan sucked in a deep breath and blew it out slowly. Either way, it was too late to back out now. To distract himself from the ball of nerves rolling his stomach, he brought out one of the folding papers he almost always kept in his pocket and began to fashion a dragon. The Dragon National Championship was the following day, a Saturday, and dragons had been on his mind. Since his mother didn't own a vid screen, he'd planned to watch the race at a local pub with Uncle Joe. Evan was so consumed by the task at hand, he didn't take heed of anything until a long caramel-coloured braid swung into his peripheral vision. When he glanced up, his mouth went dry. The prettiest girl he'd ever seen was sitting next to him and staring at his handiwork. She was clad in a plaid kilt, shiny patent leather shoes and a dainty white blouse, and her braid was tied on the end with a pink ribbon. The girl was so close he could smell the perfume soap lingering on her skin. The hair on his forearm stood on end again, just as she giggled and rubbed her own bare forearms. Are you giving me goosebumps? He shook his head. Not on purpose. Although he wanted to keep staring into the girl's hazel eyes, he forced his attention back to the last few folds of his paper. Afterward, he held the finished creation out on the palm of his hand. Can you tell what it is? Of course, she wriggled in excitement. A dragon! He was relieved she hadn't thought it was a bird. Yeah. What's it for? It doesn't have any purpose, really, he shrugged. I fold paper when I'm nervous. Immediately he wished he'd bitten his tongue. Why couldn't he have played it cool? She fixed him with her gaze. Are you nervous about the evaluation? A bit. You? Terrified, she gulped. I wish I knew what the examiner was going to ask. I expect you'll do okay, whatever it is. His gaze rested on the gold charm bracelet fashioned around her wrist, featuring various breeds of dragons. You like dragons? I adore them. My father's a dragon jockey, and we own a dragon ranch. He lets me break in the young ones when they're ready to fly.